Welcome to Uncovering the Revit Subscription Advantage Pack. Today we're going to talk about the extensions that are included with the Advantage Pack for the Revit products. I'm going to cover two of the new extensions of the Subscription Advantage Pack for the Revit 2010 products, focus on how they work and some things to keep in mind about those tools. We're going to be talking about the model review tool and the wood framing walls extension that's part of the extensions for Revit. The first extension that we're going to look at today is an extension called model review. Under the add-ins tab, you'll find the model review extension. Model review allows you to check your model for certain conditions and see if those conditions pass or fail based on a set of criteria. So using the check tool, you can check your file for certain standards. Now the model review tool comes with these five standards preloaded that allow for some basic checks, including some Revit modeling and energy standards, content standards for checking families, template standards, or even firm or project standards that are set up. Each file checks a different number of components within the Revit model and gives your report a pass-fail message to see whether or not the check failed. So we can run the firm project standards on this project and click OK. Revit will perform the analysis by checking the standards and open a new window where you can monitor and look at whether or not that check passed or failed, showing you the result. If the thing can be fixed through the tool, you can also click the fix button to fix all those elements. So in this case, we had a number of rooms that didn't have, weren't uppercase, so now we can make those all uppercase by clicking fixed. Also, we can check any other areas within within the dialog. At the bottom, it gives us the report on whether it was passed or failed, like we can click on a failure message to see whether the naming convention for this file doesn't meet my company's standards. Under items, it also gives you information about what actually was available and what we're looking for within that check. Now you can save the final check out to HTML, email it, or print it as well. You can also zoom your model into individual areas, and there's a help file as well. Now, besides being able to check your model, you can also manage those checks and create new ones. Using the Manage button on Model Review, you can open a dialog box that will allow you to customize your checks. The dialog box is pretty simple. On the top portion, it will list the name of the check, the check type, whether it's enabled, and its category, which you can customize. And then the information on the bottom part of the dialog box displays all the relevant information. The Basic Information tab allows you to enter a name or type in a category or add notes, whether you want to enable that check to be run, whether that check should just report its value, or whether you want to be able to correct the value if there was a problem. Details gives you specific information about the check. Filter lets you filter objects. And then we have the failure message that displays and the pass message. Under the file pull down, we can create a new checked file, or we can look at the predefined, for instance, the firm project standards minimal. Now all the checks that are available show up. So we can check text uppercase. This check performs a parameter case check on individual elements within the model. We go to details, and it actually allows us to select what type of element. So this is text elements or text notes. And we want to be able to set this so that they're all uppercase, lowercase, or even the title case. Filter allows me to set what type of text I want to be able to filter based on the parameter within that text. So we can get very specific down to you know a specific type of element that we want to look at. And then finally we have a failure and a pass message. Failure and pass messages can be customized by typing in values, right clicking, and choosing insert to insert either a value of the check or the table that may be made available. Creating a custom check with the tool is actually quite easy. We can go to the check pull down menu menu in Manage and add a custom check. There are a number of predefined checks that you can use. We can create standards and include the model name, model size, or the number of mirrored components, as well as checking visibility and graphics for the number of hidden views or number of elements that have, or number of views that have hidden elements. So we can also select the type of the type of view we want to look at, like floor plans, for example, under details, we can filter that by a specific type of floor plan or a specific parameter that's on floor plans. And again, we have the pass and fill message that we can customize by right-clicking and inserting a value or a table to display what we want to display within the pass or fill message. Once the check is complete, we can save this as a new check. It simply creates a BCF file anywhere that we want, and I'm just going to call this Arlen's 
from check and click save. Now to actually apply this check within our model, we need to go to the profile tab and edit the profile and then add a new check so that we can display this check within our, when we use the check tool. So I'm going to click add. I'm going to go to file name and I'm going to add the Harlan Brum check and I'm going to call this my check and I'll click OK. Now when I click OK and I close the dialog box and I go to check my model, I'll have a, in the list of checked files, my checks will appear and I can apply that on Sunset Drive and click open. Now this one check that will be looked at, it actually says there's no, none of the floor plan views didn't have any hidden elements. We can also create other checks as well within manage. Any check that we can possibly really think of can be created here just about. Under add, we can do energy analysis, like I said, visibility and graphics. MEP has some specific checks for number of spaces and space matching room name. And we have a number of standards as well, like number of families and parameter requirements is quite powerful. Parameter requirements allows you to create a check based on a specific object in the model. For example, I can choose a wall using pick elements and choose a parameter that exists on that wall, like fire rating. And now I can select that parameter and I can say, I want to make sure that it, all the walls have a one hour fire rating being applied. I can check the filter again to filter down the elements and the pass and fail message. When I'm done, I click simply save this checked file and I'm going to call this fire rating walls check. I can click save. It saves it as a BCF file that you can transfer to other machines if you'd like. You can click save. Now under profile, I need to assign this to the checks that are available for me to run. So I'm going to go to edit and under this I'll click add and I'll add the file name fire rating walls check and click open and I'll give it a description my fire rating check. When I'm done I'm going to click OK. Now it's added to the list here. I'll click OK again and I'll close the dialog. When I go back to the add-ins tab and select check now under checked file, it'll list my fire ratings checked. If I didn't add that to the profile, the check won't appear in this list of available checks to run. Now I can simply click OK and it actually reports all the walls by element ID that don't have a one hour rating. And you see I have 12 out of the 50 walls in my project that don't have the rating set correctly. I can go to the items tab and actually check and see what wall types don't have that. So I can actually add the fire rating to the wall type if I want to as well to make it a little bit faster. But we also have the element, element ID of the wall so that I can quickly find it using the element ID by selection tool. We can create a number of checks within the model review tool. We can't customize and create checks that don't exist under manage, under check that's available. But we can use the standards to use current parameter requirements to create custom checks that work for different parameters that may exist on different objects within our file. I encourage you to check out the help documentation. It also includes a expression tester for testing the expressions that may apply to names of objects um, or like names of files and those types of things. And also a tester to make sure the pick tester works when selecting an object. And then we have the help contents which talks about managing your standards, how to use the tool getting started, and known limitations to help you out. Next we have the new wood framing walls extension. The wood framing walls extension allows you to select a wall within your project, go to the add-ins tab, go to the extension manager, and double click on wood framing walls. Wood framing walls allows you to generate the wood framing for a particular wall you may have in your project. We have a number of options including the geometry, the studs and blocking, the external framing including the right stud, the left stud, the top and bottom plates, the T connections, the openings within your wall allowing you to customize the king studs and the header, and any user defined elements that you wish to add to the wall. Modifying the wall is as easy as changing the external framing, the top plates to the double or triple top plate, rotating the component so that it's the right size, and the bottom plate allowing you to rotate as well. Also allowing you to modify and select and rotate individual walls so you can see all the different walls that are available. You can either do this one wall at a time or every wall in your project at one time. Under openings, we can customize the header type, 
choosing what works best for our situation, or the king studs if we know we need double studs on either side of our framing to make the wall look correct. When that's completed, we simply press OK, and Revit will automatically generate and import that geometry into our wall. So now we have a complete wall with our framing inside of it. So when we select the wall, I can simply go in and hide it, hide the actual wall element, and now we have all our framing, including the opening that is available and is necessary to generate this wall, allowing us to create uh, framing elevations and other information needed to construct and build the project. In summary, today we talked about the two new extensions that are included in the Subscription Advantage Pack for all the Revit 2010 products. Thanks for watching.